What's happening, sports fans? Welcome back to another episode of San Diego Prep Insider. I am your host, Christian Pedersen. I am joined in studio by... Tommy Morris. David Ring. Bodhi De Silva. The intern is the one making the general noises in the background. We got a, we got a, uh, this is our last regular season show, but it's also a final show. As you can see, the girls golf scoreboard is live behind me. We will have updates on that. We will have teams going to first ever semi. We got a lot to get to. Um, Bodie, as always, is joining us via scorebook live. You can follow them at SB live CA for all your needs, especially your tournament needs. It is uh, reliable. It is clean. It is designed nicely. Um, all the team names are spelled correctly. Uh, all Everything that you could ask for, you go to Scorebook Live California and follow the drop downs. You'll get to everything you need. Bodie, I have one bone to pick with you guys on, yes. on all of that information that you input. Um, I've had a couple of times be wrong. Uh, so shame on you guys. Yep. Shame on you guys. Um, David Ring is joining us courtesy of David Ring Player Development. Follow them at David Ring 4 on Twitter or DR Player Development on Instagram. He is the greatest source for learning how to hit, also for just home runs and everything in between. Um, he also trained Tommy Pham to be that elite, lethal bat in the Padres lineup. Um, Not for probably let's, uh, two, but <laughs> Let's go ahead and let's get... Not for the first month of the year. Yeah, I didn't train the, exactly. No, I mean, like, not uh, for like the next week or two, probably. Um, <laughs> Back deal. <on> the deal. <laughs> let's get to the, the first segment that we always do is kind of game balls. This will be season-ending award game balls because basically everything that you're going to see from us following this will only be playoff, like game-specific deep dives. So this is our last time looking around, celebrating. Tommy Morris has his game balls. Let me cue up. Your sound, Tommy, because we have added a new sound to the soundboard uh, that is specifically for you and these awards. So, Tommy Morris, without further ado, let's get to your game balls slash end of season awards. All right. So, I've got six of them, three from softball and three from girls basketball. This first award is what I call the I wouldn't park there award. Let me figure out what that means. It's going to go to... Sophia Mujica from Granite Hill. She has 19 home runs. She's hitting over 400. She's only, or sorry, 16 home runs. Dyslexia kicking in. 16 home runs. She's hitting over 500. And why is it called the I Wouldn't Park There Award? Because if you ever pulled up to a high school game in the parking lots in you know, the outfield, you know, warning at your own park at your own risk, if she's playing, do not park there. First award. It's out of here. Uh, Tommy, let's keep going. Let's, oh, let's okay. give Tommy, yeah. the, the, we'll do all of his, all of yours, all of Bodie's. Okay, this is the this is not a drill award. This is not a drill. This is gonna go to Emmy Cardenas from La Jolla High. She is leading the county in strikeouts. Only a sophomore. I think she has 18 wins off the top of my head. Why is it not a drill? Because she's thrown fire. It's a real fire. I think I want to run that back. I think you said this is not a deal. Drill award initially. No, I said drill. And then dr okay, deal. Then we can run it back. Okay. Um, this is the the mall award. The Mall Award is going to go to Amber Tobin from Steel Canyon. She's got more stolen bases than games. Why is it called the Mall Award, Christian? Why, Tommy? Because when you come home from the mall, you have a lot of bags, and she takes a lot of bags home from all the games she plays. Stealing those bags. Sorry, the intern was chewing on the, the cords. All right, we're moving over oh, oh, to... Oh, good. The intern is now chewing on cables. <laughs> Dang it, intern! <laughs> We're moving over to the basketball awards. The first one is the Outside of St. Louis Award. It's going to go to Izzy Navarro. Why do we call it that, Christian? Because it's it's oddly wordy and long. Should we put it on the poll? Is there a max number of words allowed in an award title? <laughs> no, there's not. Because she's always outside of the arc. Ah, yeah, St. Louis, the arc. Is it arch or arc? Oh, you, whatever. It's the same Be thing. It's hey, better that you don't know. It's it, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's three. She shoots all three pointers. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're going to go to the owner of the key. This goes to Jasmine Kettles from Madison. This was kind of self-explanatory. She racks up the rebounds and the blocks. I think it's around 12 point, if I'm not mistaken, 12.1 rebounds so far per game and 5.7 blocks per game. Unbelievable uh, statistics there. You don't want to go inside the key if she's playing in the game, because she owns it. Finally, my favorite award, it's the... I'm not, yep, I'm doing this right. It's the credit card award. It's the credit card award. It's going to go to Jazzy. Um, I know, I'm know. i going to say it wrong, Jazz. I'm sorry. Jazzy, I know sin. I know sin. Um, why is it called the credit card award? No. She goes to country day, man. How do you not have because her? Because she racks up a lot of charges. The hustle player, she leads the county in charges with 0.4 per game. So that's why she gets that award. 
Cal Poly San Luis Obispo commit, open division champion, and apparently has five syllables in her last name, uh, despite it being only about five letters. Yep. And uh, well, she's also, I, she, I'm not going to discredit her as well. She, I think she averages about 10 points a game, too. She's a very good player, but she is the hustle player. If you have the most charges, you win that award. So. I don't remember giving her one of these, so there we go. congratulations, Those are all Jazzy. Six. Thank you, Tommy Morris. Um, Dave, Dave Ring every week brings us walk offs, brings us dingers, bring, he brings us what the people want. He's he he's a he's a man of the of the people. Um, do you have dingers and walk offs and everything? We just talking dingers this week. What do what do we have in store? So I got some awards. I've got and I've got to talk about some dingers as usual. All right. So th- then let's do our standard dingers first, and then if you have th- this is the last regular w- week of Dave's dingers, courtesy of David Ring, and uh, then we then we will get into anything additional that you have from there on. All right. Well. Quite the race is heating up here. I don't know what I'm going to call it after Tommy's very, very interesting segment. Mine's going to be super boring now. All right, so the race is, we're tied now. Marcelo Mayer and Isaiah Gomez now have 13 home runs. Both of these guys are going to get a chance to be in the playoffs, so the race continues. Uh, I heard Ryan Rivera is he at 11 or 12, did you say? He's at 12. So he, yeah. That, yeah, I believe he's at 12. So 12 for Ryan Rivera. Ben Pajak's at 10. Um, I know Braden Ross just hit his 10th the other day. So the top of the list, anything could happen at the end of the year. We know Christian's going to be playing a lot of games. Out of here. We know that this race is still in. in, in anyone can win it. Um, Zach Farrell just hit his 8th the other day, so he's still in it. And there's a lot of interesting hitters down here, you know, close to like the the five, you know, Kyle Becker hit his fifth. <clears throat> Noah Waldeck, Tri-City Christian has five. I mean, there's a lot of guys with home runs this year, and I think most impressively all around the county, there's a lot of home runs with, you know, the BB core, whatever, everyone playing the – the small ball in San Diego, supposedly. I think this is these are a lot of impressive numbers. So, I think guys to look out for. Justin Brown has seven still. Jake and Tranken has seven. So any of these guys could possibly, you know, get close to the home run king at the end of the year. I'm not going to announce my king until after playoffs are done. But I do have some awards in some other areas that we'll get to shortly. Hey, yeah. With playoffs, this is going to be one of the biggest years for guys reaching double-digit home runs. It feels like we haven't had this many. Most years you get one, maybe two that are there, but yeah, we're at incredible. four already, and um, I, I think it could get pretty, uh, pretty close to 10 um, as playoffs go on. It's also pretty interesting about this baseball season is because we didn't really, really have one last year, there's some kids who feel like they're coming out of nowhere, but they're really not. It's just they missed what would have been their like junior year or their sophomore year. So. It's it. There's some names in there that we hadn't heard before, which is kind of awesome to see some some of the guys on those lists. That's every that, that's everything. That's the dinger list. I will admit to being distracted, man. I'm loving what's going on with the girls' golf championships. You can see the score behind me. Um, we have a bishops player uh, in the lead currently. So small schools versus big teams. It's a fun championship. I will have more in just a second. Bodie De Silva from Scorebook Live. Your last regular season game balls, awards, shout outs, anything that you would like to get out uh, before we transition into full on playoff mode. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start by talking about uh, Quincy Scott from Mission Hills, who we officially like. We're the we're the like we are the first one ins on that. Yes, on my fantasy team. <laughs> I'm just gonna say he was on my fantasy team. Yeah, you missed out a chance to defend your fantasy team last yeah, week know, because uh, Dave Dave really had the the unre undisputed championship anyway but he had to rub it in to buy it by like there was nobody else in the room it into no one because well, because dave was like i know no one's here but let's still take the show in a direction where we remind everybody <laughs> that i use my large instagram audience to go ahead and win yeah, this. how many did you win by like 300 at the end of the thing Dude, I mean, it was incredible it was, there was almost a thousand votes on mine you guys almost had you know we a actually had a down general. year relatively speaking the votes last wise? yeah the last couple of years we've broke a thousand on at least three of our teams um so little love very little love right now. I don't know, people are just still figuring out whether or not any of this stuff is back. Um, <laughs> these championships do feel great, though. Yeah. Like, like being at the soccer championships with you, Bodie, last week, there was relatively little that I would have uh, singled out as being like, oh, I missed out on that. I missed out on that. Mm-hmm. Like there there wasn't this, there wasn't that. Like seasons are coming to a close successfully. Uh, I, oh, I do. Man. Yes? No, I mean, just like 
the, the playoff brackets beat me. <laughs> sorry. Deal. I thought I thought I, I thought I'd get more likes in a playoff bracket. I'm sorry. I, oh, you're talking about on our Instagram content? <laughs> yeah. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough to swallow. That's tough. So finishing up on, on <laughs> Quincy Scott here, uh, he has a hit in every game this season. Going back to last year, 33 in a row now, which is he's Ooh. past Adrian Gonzalez, which if you do that, probably a pretty good thing here in the San Diego section. Uh, they if Mission Hills just finished the regular season by sweeping Escondido. He had three hits in each of the games. Uh, he drove in 11 runs, three doubles, a home run. So he's really just getting better. 578 average and an on-base of 696. Uh, OPS is now 1,600, which uh, that's pretty good there. Uh, doubles, he's now on the, the section record list for doubles in a season. He's up to 17. He's closing in on hits in a season, getting up on that record book. So um, just a guy who he's not committed at this point, but has shown – um, just getting it done every game. Uh, really interested to see what they do in playoffs. I don't think they're going to have a first round buy, so maybe there's an additional game there. He can get the streak going, and uh, the streak sits at 38. So, um, 37, 38 would give him the 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 winner there. Josh Barber from Mount Mountain Empire 06 through 08 has the current record, and um, I definitely think Quincy has a chance to break that. I think we can call him the official batting title king <clears throat> this season no one's going to beat that big school he's get he gets the 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 tony gwynn award number 19 award right right to, uh, tommy yeah yeah okay. w- was tony any good at poway as a high like tony jr no, no, he, uh, tony no, ju- yeah tony, tony jr's from long beach yeah yeah no yeah. tony tony jr sorry was he any good because he went to poway right yeah high school. was he any good in high school yeah yeah I'm I'm not sure that they uh, submitted stats or have anything in the record book, but I'd have to look back on, it, on some of those because I'm sure though I mean Poway and RB during that time they were they were great pushing out a bunch of guys. Um, I know Brett Bochy ended up making it briefly there, and um, Rancho Bernardo you knew they if, were always going to put guys out. If I'm remembering this correctly, but I was I was younger, obviously. Um, I'm pretty sure he was like good, but the expectations for him were not to make it to the major leagues, and he did. If I'm if I'm correct on my thought process but he was definitely was good enough to road. get like it's a yeah. different road for him yeah exactly so but he was a very good player right deal uh wanted to shout out you're done with it that that was everything yep. you had on on tap all right sweet uh day two standings right now this is the live board behind me for the girls golf championships um lucy iwan uh from bishops is in first uh, I appreciate the camera support effort. Th- this gets pointed at, and then it cuts to a full screen of it. Um, wow, two under par rounds. Yes, and that is not e- the easiest because they're playing at the uh, Aviara. The, the uh, yeah, the Aviara up in the like. Normally, this is an Admiral Baker thing, mm. where you know, not that Admiral Baker is doable for everybody, but there's a there's a pretty uh, low entry threshold for being able to golf a municipal course like that. The private one they're playing at right now is significantly more impressive. And um, harder slope rating, I would assume. Yes. I don't know enough golf terminology to really follow you on that uh, one. Slope, um, slope rating means how hard the course is. Deal. Um, let's see. Any boys basketball takes or, from what you saw, Bodie? Because you, you were at Coronado, yes? Yeah. Am I, uh, am I correct that Wayne McKinney and Alex Crawford are the best one-two combo in the <laughs> county? It's pretty good. I, I posted uh, one of the several dunks of the night. Um, Alex, he gets up as quickly as any guy in recent memory. Just so explosive there. And, um, you know, I mean, Wayne's so hard to keep in, in front of you as a defender. And if he gets by you, someone else steps up and then Alex is wide open. But Army Navy, I went to that game because I expected a really good effort from Army Navy. And, and that's what I got. They only won two games during the regular season. It was a little tough for them because I know early on they couldn't play with commuter students. It was only they were only limited to who lives on campus. Um, but AJ Marmalejos, a junior who we will be talking about a ton next year, um, several thirty-point games this year, just goes and goes. He's improved so much since his freshman season. Um, he tried to lead him as as best as he could. Coronado though um, came from behind there and got it done at home. And that's a team that I think they're only going to get stronger as the playoffs go on. They're them and Orange Glen. That's that's kind of the game I'm expecting in the Division Two championship. All right. Well, I'm seeing uh, some gaps in the brackets behind me. Uh, I'm assuming information is getting updated right now. Currently, some of them are not popping up, so I won't bore everybody with trying to do this. But I wanted to uh, give a shout out to Granite Hills Girls Lacrosse making their first ever CIF championship. 
Uh, wanted to give some retroactive shout outs from the weekend uh, of soccer championships that we saw go in the books. And uh, it was Tommy, yes, who was saying that everything needs to end in penalty kicks. Yes. And then yes. we literally got penalty <laughs> kicks. Yeah, we were so Tommy, about that. We, we followed up that conversation. <laughs> Penalty kicks just stinks in the fact that it takes so long to get to would be my answer to you is having spent a weekend waiting for penalty kicks where the golden goal overtime with San Pasquale and Cathedral, it was just written all over the board that we were going to go to penalty kicks. I would say that I don't like penalty kicks if I have to wait a, 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 a an unnecessary 20 minutes worth of downtime and overtime in order to get there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you, Tommy, we, we got real life. You spoke it into existence. Uh, I'm good at that. Now, that. now we just wait for basketball overtime to be half court shot. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you have new CF rule. That's a big announcement coming in a couple of weeks. Football. See what quarterback can throw it first. Hit the goal yeah. post. Yeah, who like you do the goal post first? Yeah. Yes. I wanted to get to the one. Or uh, no, actually, wait, can I just give what my football one would be? Please. No skill position players allowed. And you start on the 20. Wow. Wait, as in like. <laughs> No Backup lineman's out playing X. Yeah. Oh, so not that you're, everyone's a lineman. Not that you're playing without wide receivers, but you no. have linemen lined up at wide receivers. And a quarterback. And a quarterback. That's interesting. Let them play. Let the boys play. See, I would do, I would start taking uh, people, like I would take it down to seven on seven, but include like, like you can pick whatever seven you want. Oh, you, you just can only send seven players. Like, okay, well, and then after one overtime quarter, you take it down to five players, and then and then it's down to three players. Well, and then, well, okay, now I'm viewing numbers issue. So you just flip them. So the eligible numbers are now ineligible, and the ineligible numbers are now eligible. That's how I do it. Wow, there. He's thought about this. Yeah, dude, the <laughs> the the stuff that you realize in five to six years worth of friendship with Tommy Morris <laughs> that he has thought about. Uh, it start to you start to go, damn man! Like there needs to be books written about how the human brain works on uh, on, on a whole other level. Kind of um, space out sometimes. One pre- playoff bracket that I did want to get to uh, basketball wise was yep. Division One. I, I got it up behind me. We have San Diego is the team that I just wanted to bring up because we had talked about them being the only other program that had made any sort of ascent as close to Sage what Creek. Sage yep. Creek baseball has done. They are in here. Bonita Vista is a perennial fun underdog to root for um country day is another team that made a pretty rapid ascension going from d4 to d1 in a couple of years uh mission bay is a previous it just feels like this is a very loaded and fun bracket considering that it was a covid year and some players are split between track and basketball basketball and baseball and whatnot it felt it feels good looking at this bracket top to bottom that we have at least one traditional throwdown going down on the basketball front. Just wanted to get takes from around the room. Dave, you don't have to even worry about this if you don't want to, but who do you like out of these four games to still be uh, a, you know, a champion favorite? Yeah, just looking at it quickly like that, San Diego was the only kind of lower seed, had to go on the road and win one, and not not too much of a surprise there. We we saw them take down St. Augustine a few weeks ago. They they obviously can can play above what they were seeded at. That Benita Vista Parker game, um, I'm I'm sure I'm not the first one to say it, but it, they should not be meeting this this early on. Parker throughout the year, they were missing Camden McCormick, a really important player for a lot of the games, and um, that that's a really fun four or five game. And and Benita Vista, they took down Modern Day Catholic in league one time. They split uh, the seven two game. La Costa Canyon beat La Jolla Country Day earlier in the year, so you know they're competitive there. So uh, like you said, a really fun bracket. And from this point on, it's really going to be tough to pick winners. I, I think I Mission Bay would be one I would pick in 3-6, but San Isidro has been playing really well up at the end of the season, had them in my top 12 or 13 teams. So uh, really competitive here. I, I think it would just be cool to see San Diego win it all just because I don't think anyone will ever do that again. Win 4-3-2-1. They've won the, it all in consecutive years, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yep. I don't yeah, think that's, that, ever, that's no, never going to happen again. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll flat out say. So it would be cool to see it happen once because that, that's crazy. Bergen family, man. Yeah. Shoot your shot, man. You got one chance at that legacy. Shoot I know. Your shot. I know. So I would, I would love to see it happen, but we'll see. Um, and then the other thing looking at this bracket, not to get too far ahead, but all of the teams who win in this next round will be guaranteed state bids. So little thing extra to, to play for it. If no, you get it to that it's point. good to start looking at that stuff because I think that without rehashing the same segment that we've done on this, but we're going to do very well with the baseball one. I'm very excited about the baseball one, but I think in general, the state people seem to be excited about expanding spring and fall state pre like, like they want to keep adding state level 
uh, tournaments and playoffs to a yeah. lot of sports that, you know, like I've always, I've not always, but I have long said that there's sometimes where we need to band together as a section a little bit more and choose to just appreciate, like, yeah, that our mentality is not, oh, we got to go down to this lower division to try and get an easy dub for a championship. Oh, it's no, let's get up into this upper division. Who cares if we come in fourth? Like, we're going on to state. We're going on for the greater good and greater purpose of the benefit of representing the San Diego section well. Uh, but no, I appreciate you bringing that up. I will, uh, Dave, you want to pick, you want know, to throw a dart against the wall, see if you can pick a champion? I have no idea. Deal. <laughs> um, no, I, I that's, kinda, you, that's usually when you chuck a dart. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I want to. I kind of want to do it because he's probably gonna be right every single time. This is how this works. If like you, the, the people the, who fill out the March Madness. Exactly. Track. Yeah. All right, All right Dave Francis Dave. Parker, La Costa Canyon, uh, San Diego. Oh, I was just asking Mission for one Bay. who's going to outright win it, but deal. Uh, <laughs> all, those are all going to be winners. So if you got picked just now, yeah, that's <laughs> like it. I love it. Um, and he literally was doing that. He, he was throwing a little dart, BP dart. Threw four darts for you guys. <laughs> threw four darts against the wall. Um, we have a ton of information coming out over the next couple of weeks with all league teams being decided, all CIF teams being decided. So please make sure that you hit subscribe to at SD Prep Insider on Twitter, on Instagram, follow our YouTube page. The San Diego Sports Association is going to be in charge of directly dispersing all of the all league stuff. So you can check out their website for more information. CIF SDS is another great place to follow. Bodie is at SD Preps. You can also follow at SB Live CA. Bodie, uh, give the people a little tease on what you got coming out over the next week. You know, it, it, and then we'll, we'll get out of here. Yeah, I just worked on a piece the other day of breakout players of the year, and I know there's there's several. I needed to cut it down to 10, so got those in, um, and look forward to seeing some more in playoffs. Uh, putting together a list of all the San Diegans who are in the NCAA baseball tournament, which uh, will start tomorrow. Uh, and then wanted to give a shout-out to Nick Allen from Francis Parker, who is playing for Team USA Baseball right now as they try and qualify for the Olympics. So um, being the short starting shortstop on that team is very impressive. Dave Ring, anything we uh, didn't get to before we get out of here? Not really. I just had a few awards and please, you know, like we can get those like in less than a minute and we can get out of here. Um, I'll just throw a few four awards out here. So we got <clears throat> the ERA leader in San Diego. We've got the filibuster. Wait, are you telling <laughs> us just the names of the awards and you're not going to tell us who wins them? Because I, I, I like that. I, I like that. Uh, I know, I know, that Dave actually would be the best the, ever. The and to, ERA and to close out the, sh- the, the, the show today, Dave's just going to list the potential of it. And I was like, oh, okay. So the earned run average leader in San Diego, Bo Brown, La Jolla, 0.00 ERA. Oh, can I name this one? Can I name this one? Wait, 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 wait. Over how many innings, though? 19 the, innings. Yeah, they have the qualifier as 19 innings, so. Okay, that's significant. So I'm going to give him the ERA crown. Can I, can, I, can, can I just come up with names as we go? Of course. That's the golf score award. Awesome. <laughs> the, <laughs> Goodbye. The, Get the out of here. The clutch award for RBIs, whatever you want to call it. Caleb Homel, 48 RBIs in 31 games for Grossmont. That's insane. Um, you guys crushed the ball over there. They've got two guys at the top of the RBI list. Isaiah Gomez has 45 RBIs in 31 games. Manual driver award. <laughs> Because you got to use a clutch. All right. Ten. And <laughs> <laughs> I can't drive a manual car. Wait, are, are, every there, time. Are, there, are there any cars being made these, t- these I days? Think, that I think are they're still done. Like, I think oh, they're yeah. done. No, there's, there's, it's definitely coming back a lot. Some of us, How am I supposed some to... of us prefer it. Really? Do you dr- drive old, like, do not you, every oh, day, but I, if I could, I would. That, that is I groundbreaking it. news. Was it your that first experience and it just stuck with you, or did you start from an automatic, go to a stick, and enjoy it more? Yeah, it started, and just once I learned, really enjoyed it more. It is one of those things, if you know how to do it, it's kind of, it's kind of a flex. It's like, oh, check but this you don't out. Drive you, know, like a, like, you don't drive like, like a racy enough car to, to, to be like a stick kind of guy. Like, what is your stick car that you drive? Your regular SD prep mobile isn't Correct. Stick. No, it's an automatic. Okay, Some yeah. of my dad's older cars. Mm, nice. Okay, let's open that door just a little <laughs> bit more. What are these older cars? Are you like stuff from the sixties, like hot rod stuff? Like, are you like not uh, hot rod, but some some of that style? A tad bit of muscle, like yeah. you. Okay, Bodie certainly doesn't seem to want to like let us know exactly <laughs> that he's driving in a set. A he's trying to get to, yeah. We just want someone showing up his house. He's stealing his car. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, Bodie will like. 
<laughs> so it was a go-kart. Bodie flamboyantly flexes in certain weird ways, uh, and then other ways apparently he doesn't tell us what he's up to. All right, so uh, Last completely derailed, de- de- derailed your segment. Evan Vaselu, Grossmont, 10 wins, Cy Young Award. I mean, that's insane. 10 wins in high school. That's a really good amount of wins. Uh, Vaughn Major. Which is nuts, because we were talking about the record being, what, 19 or 22 or something right. like that? It's, yeah, before the pitching rules. But, but still, but, yeah. I, but yeah, I yeah. we're here being like, oh, man, damn, a kid got... Kid broke t- double right. yeah, in, in the current format, it's anything above 10, 11 is really hard to do. And there's six guys with eight wins. I mean, lots of lots of quality pitching. We've definitely seen some, probably some more horses in the past, but I, I, you got to give Evan some credit. Ten wins for a, a huge Grossmont, you know, victories this year. They they won league and wanted to give them props. And then the last few shout-outs, just a just few walk-offs here. Uh, Point Loma walked off against Scripps Ranch, which was kind of a – a little payback from the end of the year. Scripps Ranch walked off on Point Loma at one point, and uh, believe it or not, East Lake loses again to Montgomery on a walk-off walk, which gives Bonita Vista the outright Metro Vista yeah, I was gonna make sure we championship. Got to that. I'm a big fan of Cody. Oh, also and big and fan yeah. of Bonita Vista. I, I mean, I think I want to give them the last thing I'm going to say about them. They're probably on one of the biggest streaks. Uh, as far as hot streaks and in, in, in all of San Diego right now. So their team to, to watch going into the playoffs, man. Yeah, Huge well, props to them. The shift for them, they started 2-0, and lost seven in a row, and now 14 of 15 since. So uh, definitely doing the right thing one. at the right that's point. Insane. And, um, yeah, I mean, they'll be in Division One playoffs, and uh, that's definitely not a team you'd want to see on your side of the bracket right now. Question for Along thought, with Eastlake. Thought, yeah. thought experiment. So – the way that the max preps ratings work, should they factor in recent we don't, games? We don't ind- endorse max preps publicly on but this they, show. Because and the they go off of it, in, don't they, for the base, playoffs? In baseball, it'll be the CIF power rankings. Okay, CIF power rankings, sorry. So the yep. CIF power rankings be more lenient or reliant on the more recent games. Because, like, we're, we're talking basketball, a kid misses at the beginning of the year, and then, yep. like, it kind of messes up the point system. Or is that going to... If, if you found a way to do it, I wouldn't be against it. I just, I'm not sure how you equate, oh, well, he's been back for 11 games, but not, like, he missed the first three, or at what point do you kick it in? Is it yeah. a scale? Or a... I'll wait. I, yeah. I, I, I'll uh, wait. <laughs> um, I just wanted to be polite on this. Uh, sorry, in-person Zoom joke. Um, uh, I have long held that water polo is the sport that does it accurately in terms okay. of playoff ratings here in San Diego. They incorporate the math, and they let the math spit out the exact bracket, and then they have like a council of elders that is just there to unbiasedly look at that like, and be this like, makes sense. this, this is absurd, absurdly wrong that this team is in open division. They mm-hmm. need to be the five seed in D1 because, like you said, they stockpiled dubs in a yeah. weird way or something like that. And nobody objects to it because it's all guys on the water polo front. It's all guys that have like – the historic 20 plus year track records. Yeah. There's no shortage of that in baseball. Guys are like the last six weeks, we've seen how many people hit the milestones of several hundred wins. Mm -hmm. Like there are coaches that I guarantee you can rise above the political squabble pettiness that if you put, you know, X, Y, and Z, like you put five coaches in a room and they will be able to accurately understand the entire County and, proofread all of the mathematically spit out brackets and be like yes and no i have oh i've never understood why that can't just be the accepted hybrid model that solves all of this because no math equation in the years that we have been doing this has ever worked out perfectly and mm. i just you know, you'd be sick if there's like one like yoda one like grandmaster for each sport and they just well, like, I call it the Council of Elders because literally Dick Draz, the 87-year-old yeah. guy who's the water polo coach that's just like the godfather of everything, sits in the room and looks that gives off that Yoda is <laughs> like no, like he, like he, he just hangs out. Like he doesn't he doesn't actually change anything, but yeah. he's just there because he likes the community and he kind of everyone's like, ah, Draz, I'll go hang out with Draz for an hour and just I don't I don't know. I just that has always been my biggest gripe is why can't we just be like one dude from each part of the county can understand all of this enough. Let's get them in a room. Let's vet these things, and let's get this right because yep. it tends to also be on the like the D's two one and open that that ha- like D- very little people are complaining about four and five mm-hmm. ever being anything that's out of whack. And then it's the you know the the, the more important ones that have state seating and been like and have potentially like teams that their basketball team 
was a state champion, so it took them forever to get all the, or their football team was a state. Yeah, like it took them forever to get to, to full well, and, speed. Yeah, I agree. Just looking at what the power rankings sit right now, and I don't think there's a ton to argue up at top. I mean, San Marcos would be the one, Rancho Bernardo two, yeah. Grossmont three. Those all those all seem right. What seems wrong to me is Santana, a team that's won thirteen in a row wasn't even challenged in league play right now. They'd be left left out of the open division. I think they they're deserving of a chance. It, it it's too bad for them that unfortunately the league that they're in this year did not have enough competitive teams and, and slowed them down. And then you go down a little further. Benita Vista has been on a roll 11 and one in league. Well, they're right now sitting behind a cathedral Catholic team that was four and seven in league. So the, I understand that they played some tougher opponents, but Benita still had Otai and East Lake in league and they went three and one against those teams. So um, they I'm sure there's always going to be stuff to shift against it. I think ultimately you just try and find what what formula makes the most sense, but maybe there isn't one that every year makes the most sense. It, year by year, it can kind of change. And um, I, I definitely get having people in the room that, that can give their opinion rather than just a computer every time. We good. Everybody covered everything. We got anything else to get to? Make sure you follow Dave Ring at Dave Ring 4 at DR Player Development. Tommy's at Real Tommy Morris. I just wanted to close it out with showing the scoreboard one more time and uh, zooming in on, I mean, we've seen kind of runaway championships, but like uh, uh, Division One, Torrey Pines is leading by, what is that, 49 strokes? Uh, and Division Two Modern Day is leading by 35 strokes as a team. Um, what? That seems good. Uh <laughs> It's congratulate like the, there's still like twelve <laughs> holes left, but congratulations to to modern day. How many wait, how many girls are in each team? Six. So six girls are thirty seven over combined. Yep, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yep, and especially <laughs> considering they're they're six holes in on day two. Yeah, that's pretty pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Modern day has won like every because they don't re league they don't re division in golf. Oh, there's okay. no bouncing up or down. Modern day has like their, Get their, up there. their modern day has their their foot on the throat of I mean, division second two place or now like, division one. <laughs> like, like they, they will forever slaughter division two golf. It's Insane. the weird, it's the last, the last nomenclature of these, but yeah, I just wanted to highlight that that's a blowout. Um, so congratulations to both of them. We'll talk to you guys next week.